email address is on the slide. So please feel free to email me any questions that you have uh, during the webinar or after the webinar. And I also have my eye on the group chat box. So if you have questions during the webinar, please feel free to chat those in. I am more than happy to take those as we go through the presentation. If there's anything that's really specific to one person individually, I'll probably hold that question until the end. Okay. I want to give a little bit of background about RIT, uh, my university. We are Rochester Institute of Technology. We are one of the largest private universities in the United States, and we are one of the top producers of graduates in the STEM fields. So that means computing, engineering, uh, information sciences. We are one of the top producers in the United States for students who are finishing STEM programs, and uh, we're very well known for those programs. However, we also have a, a diverse body of master's and PhD programs, and our students study in all different disciplines from management to sustainability and liberal arts. We have almost 19,000 students on campus, and of those 19,000 students, about 3,200 are graduate students, and they are studying in our master's and PhD students. The others are undergraduate students who study over 300 different different bachelor's programs at RIT. And then in addition to that, we have 125,000 alumni worldwide. And those alumni are a great network to tap into while you're looking for jobs, uh, both during your studies, if you're looking for co-op or internship, and after. Okay. You can see some of our rankings listed on this slide. We are ranked very highly for programs like computing and engineering. You can see our MIS program is also ranked very high. But we also have really wonderful film and animation programs, visual communication design. Um, we have the number two ranked game design and development program. And we also have a uh, number two in the US uh, industrial design MFA. I see one question just came in for the webinar about getting a recording of this conversation. And we are recording the presentation, so the presentation will be available to view after it ends. So don't worry about not being able to view this again. You will have access to the presentation. Uh, Rochester, New York is where we're located. Uh, you can see in the top right-hand corner there, there's a map of New York State. We're located in the western part of New York. That's actually a little bit closer to Buffalo than it is to New York City. But that being said, we're about an hour flight to New York, and Rochester does have a, an international airport, so it's very easy to get to and from the city. And we are the third largest city in New York State. So after New York City and Buffalo, Rochester is the, the largest city. We're home to about 750,000 people. And what that means is that you have the resources available to you in a typical bigger city, like a lot of culture and museums and entertainment um, companies. But it also has a smaller town feel. There's a lot of colleges in Rochester, so there tend to be a lot of students studying throughout the area, and it's very friendly. We are also home to companies like Xerox, Bosch and & Lomb, and Kodak. And these companies hire many of our students for internships and co-ops, and sometimes even full-time jobs. Um, but you are not limited to staying in Rochester for these positions. You can actually go anywhere in the US. And I'll talk more about that later on in the slides. And then I think it's important to mention that many of our programs were developed to meet the needs of the industry in Rochester. So a lot of our programs in optics and sustainability, engineering science, um, imaging, they were created for the Rochester community itself because of a need. I have a couple questions about admissions requirements, and I'll save those to the end of the presentation because I will walk you through the entire application process. So I'm gonna give a brief overview of RIT and some of the, um, the working uh, requirements and abilities that you have as a STEM student in the US, but these are um, a couple introductory slides about RIT. We're home to nine colleges. We, again, have our largest college is the Computing Information Sciences College. Our second largest college is the College of Engineering. But we also have a lot of diversity in uh, the other programs that we offer. And we're very collaborative. So we encourage students to take electives outside of their discipline, um, to work with faculty and work with students who are not necessarily in their department. And because of that, a lot of 
interdisciplinary projects happen on campus, and there's some really neat research and innovative work that happens. RIT is uh, very proud to be career focused. Um, we're incredibly specialized and we are technologically based. For our graduate students who are on campus, uh, we focus on providing state-of-the-art faculty facilities. And again, our focus is on careers and collaboration really make the programs unique. Um, for us, our faculty are coming to the classroom bringing real world experience. They are out in the industry, they're getting a lot of skills and knowledge that they're bringing back to the classroom for students to, to learn and take advantage of. We also have 50 state of the art labs on campus. So regardless of which program a student is studying in, they have access to all 50 of those labs and they vary quite a bit. Um, we have a microelectronics clean room, we have a 3D printing center, there's a manufacturing lab that's sponsored by Toyota. There are lots of different places where you can do your research and get a lot of hands-on experience. Additionally, RIT is uh, very entrepreneurial. We have the number one student center in the US for innovation and entrepreneurship. That means that students who want to launch a business or have a company that they want to create, you have the tools to do that on campus and faculty resources to help you build a business plan and to get started with that. As I mentioned, we're one of the top producers of students who graduate in STEM programs. Um, again, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Uh, the difference between studying in a STEM and a non-STEM program in the US is really just the length of time that you're able to stay back in the US after finishing your degree to work on OPT. So you can find a list of all of our programs on the website that's linked on the slide. Um, more than 70% of our students are enrolled in STEM programs. And we're, again, in the top producers of U.S. University STEM graduates. If you have questions about our different research centers and labs, you can also click on that link to learn more about the individual spaces that we have available for students. So I often get asked about STEM programs in the US and that's because students do want to stay and work for up to three years on their occupational practical training after they finish the degree. But there are so many different careers outside of computing and engineering that a lot of students don't think about that are also STEM programs. So I wanted to list a couple of the programs that we offer that are included in the STEM discipline but are a little bit different and offer different career opportunities. And uh, the picture here is one of our students who is a current graduate from our packaging science program. He's from Greece. And he was able to do a lot of research on campus and get very involved uh, with a national packaging science organization, which gave him the opportunity to travel around the US while he was in the graduate program. But some of the questions, um, or some of the programs that we get asked about are um, programs that are related to management, for example, business analytics and computational finance. Those are both STEM degrees within our College of Business. Um, we also have a STEM designated visual communication design. So for students who are um, creative and want to work more in fine arts, you can do that, but still be in a technical degree program that will lead to a STEM degree. I'm seeing some questions come in about uh, scholarships, and that's great. I'm gonna talk about that in just a little bit. We definitely have scholarships available that are merit-based for our students, and that information will be at the end of the presentation. So sit tight, and that information will be coming very soon. All right, so I wanted to share a quick information about RIT's career and employment trends. We have an entire website dedicated to this, so if you have questions about the job outlook for a specific degree program, um, whether it's the average starting salary or the outcomes for that program, you can find that directly on our website by degree program. And we do that because as a university, we wanna be as transparent as possible about your future job outlook so that you feel confident coming into a program, knowing that you're going to get the, the, the job and the salary that you want to once you graduate. We are incredibly experiential and believe that hands-on education really makes a difference in making you more competitive in the job market. And all of our programs provide real-world experience for you to, to grow as a student during your studies at RIT. So these are a couple different 
formats that we yeah, students are able to do internships and I already mentioned research. Um, we have on-campus employment and teaching and research assistantships available. There is also a world-renowned co-op program at RIT where students can get industry experience before they graduate. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that specifically. So the difference between a co-op and an internship is that the cooperative education program is typically full-time work for students. And during that full-time employment, students are able to earn a full-time salary working for the industry. We have had over 3,800 co-op placements completed by international students over the past three years. And the great thing about a co-op placement is that it can be done anywhere in the U.S. or anywhere around the world. It doesn't need to be done in Rochester. So the top three states where our students tend to co-op are New York, Massachusetts, and California. And a lot of our computing students, of course, will go to Silicon Valley and they'll work for companies like Microsoft and Google um, and get some experience there before coming back to Rochester to finish their degree. We do everything that we can to help our students find internships and co-ops. Um, and we have thousands of, of government partners. So there is a lot of chances for you right on campus to meet with employers, to meet with our corporate partners, to inquire about jobs and to interview on campus. Um, the picture that's in the right bottom or right hand of the slide, that is a picture of one of our career fairs. We have two career fairs every year. One is in October, the other one is in March. And they both bring about 250 companies directly to campus. They are meeting with both domestic and international students to share information about the positions available at their specific companies and to interview students on campus for those jobs. So many of our students will find full-time jobs after graduation because of the career fair. Again, the co-op is just an intensive work experience. It really helps you build your resume. Um, we require a co-op placement for most of our STEM undergraduate programs, but if you're planning to come to RIT for a master's program, it's optional. So you don't have to complete a cooperative education placement or an internship, but we definitely encourage you to consider it because it's a great opportunity again, to build your resume and to get some really, really in-depth, hands-on experience. I wanted to share a couple examples of students who completed co-ops. Uh, Ane, for example, who's an industrial engineering student, he co-opted at Tesla. Um, that was able to lead him to a full-time job as a quality engineer in a manufacturing plant in Michigan. He's working there now. We also had an information science and technology student. She was working at Deloitte. Um, she was working there as an intern and because of the work that she did she was able to leverage that into a full-time job when she finished the program so that's the benefit of a, a co-op too is that it often can lead to a, a bigger and longer relationship with the employer partner because if they like the work that you're doing and you like working for them then they may choose to keep you on for a longer term after you graduate because of our career placement uh, and our focus on finding new co-ops and internships, we have over a 97% outcomes rate. That means that almost all of our students are successfully placed after they finish the program. Uh, almost 80% are fully employed in their field of choice within six months of graduation. And then there's a smaller portion that will go on to further full-time study. And that could be either uh, a second master's program, often it's a PhD, and we do have PhD programs at RIT uh, in addition to MBA programs. Our median starting salary is $71,000, but that is just an average. I would definitely recommend looking on the job outcome site that I shared before, because that has some wonderful information that's broken down by degree. Um, students, for example, in computer science, they typically make closer to six figures um, per year. Uh, the median salary includes students from all different backgrounds. Here's another picture of our university-wide career fair where you can come. Um, it's a two-day event, uh, 250 employers, 600 recruiters on campus, and they're all meeting with our RIT students to talk about job opportunities. And then a list of a partial list of some of the companies that hire RIT students. These are just a, a partial list. There are give you an idea of uh, who's coming to campus most on the largest number of students. I also mentioned that some companies like Apple actually will not come to our, our annual career fair. They instead choose to come to campus multiple times throughout the year on their own because they hire so many of our students. And so for them, 
coming to RIT for their own mini fair is actually more beneficial to them. Uh, another example, um, this is Katon, who worked in our office actually as a graduate liaison. He studied telecommunications engineering technology. And um, he did a co-op in Denver, Colorado. So again, another example of a student who traveled across the US to, to complete their co-op. And he now works at Amazon. So as you consider graduate programs and you're looking at different opportunities for careers and internship and co-op opportunities, I definitely encourage you to work with your academic department early. Uh, again, the co-op is optional for master's students, but we recommend students coming into RIT for their first semester, work with their faculty advisor to notify them of their desire to do a co-op. That way you can plan out your career path and your curriculum at the, at the campus um, for the two years that you plan to be there. We also consider you to or recommend that you are flexible at your career path and options. There are so many different STEM programs out there. So many of them are overlapping and related that there are lots of different paths that, that you could take. So after you finish your, your program and you're on campus, um, there are a couple different ways that you can work on campus. And there's, a, of course, on-campus jobs. International students can work on campus up to 20 hours a week during the semester. Um, during breaks, that goes up to 40 hours a week. So there is some earning potential there. But once you've studied on campus for a year as an international student, you're then eligible to work off campus. And that off-campus employment comes in two different formats. That is a CPT, or Curricular Practical Training, or OPT, Optional Practical Training. So this graphic kind of breaks down what that looks like for you as an international student. During your first year as a student on campus, you can work in our on-campus jobs, those are part-time positions. After first year, you can work on campus as well, and you can also apply for curricular, optical, curricular practical training, excuse me, um, which allows you to work off campus in an internship or co-op that's related to your program. And then after graduation, you're eligible for OPT, which is optional practical training. Um, and if you're in a STEM program, you're eligible for an extension that allows that OPT and that off-campus work to last for up to three years. So the optional practical training allows for full-time employment anywhere in the US, and it does allow you to move between companies. So you can apply for one position, begin working there, and if you decide that it's not a good fit, you're able to apply for different positions and switch companies. And it's typically granted for one year initially. So once you finish your master's program or your PhD program, you can apply for OPT, and you have 90 days to find a full-time position. It can be extended for two additional years if your degree is in STEM. Once you finish your OPT, your options to stay back in the US are to apply for temporary worker status. Um, that's an H-1B visa. And your company would need to sponsor you for that status change from F-1 to H-1B. And that is valid up for up to six years. Having a, an advanced degree, like a master's or PhD program, can definitely help make you more competitive for that H-1B. So when you're looking for programs uh, in US campuses and once you arrive to a U.S. campus, who will help you? All campuses will have multiple resources and different offices that are there to support you. We are a very welcoming environment in higher education, and we do everything that we can to support international students. At RIT, we have a large international student services office, and our office helps you uh, get oriented to campus, get settled, open a bank account, to learn about U.S. culture, they also do regular checks to make sure that you're maintaining your visa status, which is very important during your studies. And once you're ready to apply for CPT or OPT, they will be able to help you. Our International Student Services Office also hosts a program called Peer Advisory Leaders, or PALS. And those students are mentors who help our incoming students get acclimated to campus culture. And they kind of show them around the campus, give tours, help during orientation, and can answer any questions that you have as you prepare to come to the US. All universities will also have a career services office. 
Um, the Career Services Office will be really vital to you as you look for internships and co-ops and full-time jobs. They offer advisors who can support you for your specific discipline. Um, they usually host workshops and seminars on uh, interview skills and preparing your resume. They'll do a lot of work to make sure that you are ready to go once you're, once you're looking for a full-time job. The Career Services Office is typically the office that will also host career fairs and they'll invite the employer partners to campus. They do all the organization for that. They'll host graduate school fairs, um, networking programs, often pulling in alumni who are related to the industry to help connect you. And they will host any online resources. So for example, RIT has a, an online job site called Handshake. And our online job site allows you to search for any position that's available to students. So on our online, uh, on online, you can look for part-time jobs. You can search for any full-time jobs that our career services office has identified. And they'll also regularly update that website with co-ops and internships that you can search for and apply for online with their support. So again, there's a lot of help, a lot of guidance in helping you be successful once you get to a U.S. university. All right, so for RIT, um, now I'm gonna kind of switch gears because I know there are a lot of questions about the application process for RIT specifically. At RIT, we are accepting applications for most programs on a rolling basis. What that means is that there is no strict deadline to apply for most programs. Um, I do recommend looking on our website to find out the individual application requirements for your specific program. So if you see that bottom right hand uh, box and you can click on that, you'll be able to go to a website to find the individual requirements for your specific program. Um, so for example, PhD programs do have a recommended a priority deadline uh, that can vary by program. But most programs like computer science and our engineering MS programs, they will accept applications for the program until the seats are full. So you can submit your application anytime online, and as soon as your application is complete, we send it for review. To apply, uh, in general, we are looking for our RIT online application form. We want to streamline the process to make it as simple as possible for you, so everything can be submitted electronically. Uh, the online application form can be submitted. That will allow you to create an RIT application portal. Um, and from that portal, you can upload scanned copies of your transcripts and degree certificates. We do not require a WES evaluation or any other credential evaluation for the application process. Um, you can submit just the official scanned copies of what you have, and we will do the evaluation on our end. If you are admitted to the program before you enroll, we would ask that you bring your official final transcripts to RIT or mail them to us in advance, but that's not required for the admissions process. Our master's programs also require a statement of purpose, a resume, and generally two letters of recommendation, although there may be select programs like the PhD that require three letters of recommendation. So again, I would refer you to the website to find the individual requirements for your program. Other requirements that can vary include standardized testing, so a GRE or GMAT score. Most some programs would require a GRE. Um, some programs may be requiring a writing sample or portfolio. For example, game design and development and visual communication design, they like to see a portfolio of your creative work. And there aren't strict requirements for that. It's, it's generally about 20 pieces of your work that showcase your talent and uh, your perspective in the program. For international students, we also require a TOEFL or IELTS. And the minimum TOEFL score for admission is a 79. The minimum IELTS is a 6.5. We do require official test scores be reported to RIT in order to review your application for admission. So you can have those scores sent to us by ETS or by the British Council, and they'll be linked automatically to your application to complete the, the application for you. Okay. So I mentioned that we accept applications on a rolling basis. That means that we encourage you to apply early because some programs do fill. Um, in addition, applying early, make sure that you have all your application materials to us. It gives us ample time to review your application and also to issue you an I-20 so that you can apply for a student, a student visa. So I do think that it is uh, in your favor to apply early, but there is definitely still time right now to apply for fall 2020. Fall semester begins in August. And once you submit your application for review and it is complete, you'll typically get a decision within about four to six weeks. 
So when we admit a student to the program, we will release your admissions and scholarship decision together so that you have both your offer of acceptance and also your scholarship offer to help you make an informed decision. Uh, the cost for RIT uh, estimated for one year is listed here on the slide. Um, most of our students in STEM programs will take nine credit hours a semester. So you'd be looking at the tuition cost on the right hand of the screen. However, we do calculate tuition by the number of credits that you take each semester. So your semester tuition can vary depending on where you are in the program and what courses you're taking. Okay, and now to our scholarship program. Like I said, when we review your application for admission, we are going to automatically review you for merit-based scholarships awards. There is no separate application for scholarship. So basically your application for admission is your application for any scholarships that we have available. And our merit scholarships are awarded as a percentage of the tuition. Uh, the decisions are based upon a holistic review of your profile and they are made by the admissions committee and our faculty members who will be advising you. So they're going to review your GPA, test scores, any work experience that you have, if you have it, it's not required, um, resume, letters of recommendation, and they'll use all of that to make a decision about your potential to succeed in the program. The scholarships that we offer generally range from about 10 to 40% of the cost of tuition. So there is uh, the potential to cover quite a bit of your cost of education there. Sometimes the awards can go higher for our most talented students, but on average, the award would range between 10 to 40%. About 85% of our admitted students receive some form of funding. So if you apply to our program, it is likely that you would receive some form of merit scholarship. The amount would just vary depending on your overall profile for the program. We have other funding options in the form of assistantships, both teaching, graduate, and uh, research assistantships. Most departments will want to meet you in person before they offer you an assistantship, just because you'll be working so closely with them for their research or for their classes. Um, but as soon as you get to campus, you can apply for the open positions. And then as you move through the program, you'll become more and more competitive of an applicant for an assistantship since you'll be working closely with the faculty and getting to know them. We also have on-campus jobs available. RIT has over 9,000 on-campus part-time jobs. So there are more positions on campus than we have students who are able to work them. So you'll always be able to find an, a part-time job. And again, you can work as soon as you arrive on campus. Uh, you can work up to 20 hours a week during the semester and up to 40 weeks or 40 hours a week after um, the semester ends. So during winter break or over the summer break. And our jobs pay a minimum of 11, 50 per hour. Uh, so you can definitely earn some income that will help with living expenses or other expenses that you have on campus. Okay, so that is the presentation in summary, but I want to leave you with a couple of different points about RIT. And then of course, I'll say and answer any questions that you have. At RIT, again, we're incredibly career focused. Uh, Rochester is committed to helping you be successful in your career path. And because of that, we have over a 97% placement rate after graduation. So we're very technical, very uh, specialized, and giving you a lot of hands-on experiential learning opportunities so that you can build your resume in the program, um, which makes our students very competitive for jobs after graduation. We have one of the largest co-op, um, largest and most comprehensive co-op programs in the United States. So we have a lot of industry connections over 3,000 of them. And uh, because of that, our students are always connected to employers and to uh, different networks where they can get information about the field before they, they finish the program. Our faculty are incredibly specialized. Um, they're bringing the highest degree available to them in the field. They're working in the industry. Faculty to student ratio is one to 13. So our faculty are accessible. You'll never feel lost on campus. Um, you are a faculty of open doors. And as a master's student, you are uh, assigned to a faculty advisor who will be your mentor throughout the program. So your advisor is a faculty member in your department who will be your guide and help you choose your courses every semester, help you identify co-op opportunities, and so on. And then last but not least, we are technologically based. Um, we have technology infused in every program. Our campus is modern. Um, we're constantly growing and building new facilities to make RIT 
a better place for you to be to do your research and to interact with other students. Okay. Great, so with that, I am going to stay on the webinar for any questions that you have. Um, you may have questions about your specific program or about the application process. Please feel free to email me directly. I can put you in touch with one of our faculty members or with the right admissions counselor who can walk you through the application process. I'm also happy to help you myself. Uh, you can find my phone number and email address on this slide. Feel free, feel free to reach out to me. And if you ever wanna to talk to an alumnus or a current student who's studying in a program that you're interested in, I am definitely help, happy to help make that connection as well. We have a team of student ambassadors who'd be happy to talk to you about their student experience and the work that they're doing. So um, please know that those resources are available to you. Uh, we definitely understand that applying to a school in the US or anywhere around the world for graduate study, it takes a lot of research and a lot of work and uh, we wanna be there to guide you along every step of the way. Okay, so I'll take a couple questions through uh, through the chat and I can, I can see them coming in. I'll answer them just verbally right now. Um, so I have a question about assistantships available in mechanical engineering. Um, yes, we definitely have assistantships available in our mechanical engineering department. Um, they, do not offer, they do not offer assistantships to students before they arrive on campus though. So you're welcome to reach out to faculty members in advance to talk about your research interests and to inquire about available positions but they would wanna interview you on campus before they, they need that offer to you. So they, they have scholarships that are available. Those scholarships go up to 30% of the cost of tuition. They could definitely make that award before you came to campus, and then you'd be able to apply. Uh, SAT score for engineering. So for students who are applying for undergraduate engineering programs, the average SAT score that we wanna see is about 1280 to 1430, somewhere in that range. Mechanical engineering is one of our most competitive undergraduate engineering programs, um, but that is an average score. And again, we do a holistic review, so there isn't a strict cutoff for that. Uh, GRE for engineering would be a minimum of about 300. Uh, we do have a PhD that you could complete in chemical engineering, but there is not an MS program in chemical engineering. Um, probably the closest related would be a, a material sciences engineering MS program. So we do have that program and you would be welcome to uh, apply to that. I have a question about PhD in math. Um, I should mention too that most of our PhD students are fully funded. So if you're admitted to a PhD program in math or a PhD in engineering, then the program is fully funded. You would receive a 100% scholarship and a stipend to help cover the cost of attendance. And if you were disconnected or you had a hard time hearing, I know that this webinar was recorded, so you are, um, you'll be able to access the presentation later if you need to refer back to it. A question about average class size of master's in data science. Um, RIT's data science program is actually new. We admitted our first on-campus program for fall 2019, so they're currently in the program now. Um, I believe the class is about 25 to 30 students, so fairly small, and we're looking to bring in about the same number of students for fall 2020. Uh, RIT's Computing and Information Colleges program is ranked very highly nationally. I don't think the Master's in Data Science program has an individual program ranking yet because it is so new. Uh, can we start a PhD after bachelor's? Uh, you can apply for a PhD after completing a bachelor's, but what's really important to the faculty members who are making an admissions decision is that you have ample research experience. So if you are a bachelor's graduate and you have never done any research, it's unlikely that you would be a competitive applicant for the PhD program. Let's see. Is there an SAT score um, or GRE verbal score that can waive the TOEFL or IELTS? Um, undergraduate students can waive the TOEFL or IELTS if they score at least a 560 on the SAT verbal. So yes, we can waive the TOEFL or IELTS for undergraduate students. For graduate students, we would still require the GRE even if, or I'm sorry, we would still require the TOEFL or IELTS even if the GRE score is, is very high.
And I have a question about how much you can earn working. Um, as a student uh, studying on campus, if you're working on, in on-campus jobs, you can work 20 hours a week. The minimum salary is $11.50 per hour. So you can get an idea of how much you can make during the semester. Off-campus positions like co-ops, the salary for a co-op can range between $16 to $22 per hour, depending on what field you're in and what company you're working for. On our job outcome site, we do list a lot of that information for you so that you can see the average co-op salary by, by discipline. We don't have a PhD in environmental science, but we do have a PhD in sustainability. So that's very related to environmental sciences. I would encourage you to look at that program. A uh, question about machine learning uh, or data science. Uh, of course, we have many labs devoted to machine learning and data science. Um, we have a computer science program that is one of our largest MS programs at RIT. It's also a very large undergraduate program. So artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, there is a lot of work happening in those fields at, at RIT. So the, there is no minimum GRE cutoff for any programs. We generally recommend a 300. Of course, the stronger you score, the more competitive you are. There isn't a minimum requirement, though, for assistantships. The merit scholarships that we offer do cover up to 40% of the tuition. They're, they're entirely merit-based. Those tuition scholarships do not include any kind of teaching assi assignment or requirement. A teaching assistantship or research assistantship would be awarded on top of the overall scholarship that you've already been awarded. And those assistantships can come with a stipend that can help cover living expenses and, and other fees. Um, it also may have an additional scholarship um, related to it. And we have a PhD in computing and information sciences technologies that would probably be the closest PhD in IT. We're going to look at all grades, O-level and A-level grades, all grades on the transcript to make a decision. We don't require extracurricular activities for undergraduate students, but we definitely take a look at them. We want to see well-rounded students in general. So if students have shown uh, demonstrated leadership experience or have experience in other areas, then they uh, can be a little bit more competitive for a program. And is there any course related to Master's in Water Resource? And that would probably be our Environmental Science MS program or our Sustainable Systems MS program, both which would, re, which would focus on renewable energy and, um, and, uh, and water and fuel. All types of extracurriculars would be considered for the undergraduate application. <laughs> so please list uh, any clubs, organizations, volunteer work, we'll look at all of that. And that is a field on the common application. So students can generally enter all of their extracurricular activities right there on the application. Okay, so another question about bachelor's degree holder, um, can you apply for a PhD? You potentially could, but we do require extensive research experience for a PhD program. So if you haven't completed research, I would recommend getting a master's program first um, or before you apply for the PhD to make your application more competitive. All right. Well, I'll stay for a couple more minutes. Uh, again, if you think of any other questions, please feel free to email me or call me anytime. I'm always happy to help. Um, I definitely appreciate your participation and attendance this afternoon for the webinar. Um, it was really great to have this interactive chat, and I hope that this was helpful in sharing some information about RIT and application requirements in general. So um, again, I'm going to mute my microphone. I'll answer any questions here through text for a little bit longer. And, uh, and then I hope to be connected with you through email or to see your applications to RIT next fall. 
Um, thank you to Education USA for the opportunity to meet you all and to provide this presentation. And have a great night.